can make a function from a pattern of pictures. If we look, the first question is just the gray tiles. So if you look just at the gray tiles, if I kind of make a little table here. So this is only the gray. So picture number one, if you count them, there should be ten of them. Picture number two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. And picture number three, one, two, three, four, five, six, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Okay, now the gray ones are growing at a linear rate. So each time the picture changes, it looks like they're adding four new gray tiles to the picture. So question A, how many gray tiles are they going to need if they keep going and you stop on design 48? So I'm going to come up with a rule that will work for any number that I want to stop on. So if it's linear, I know that it's going to follow the model y equals mx plus b. And I've already found my m, your slope, your rate of change is 4. So y equals 4x, now I just need the b. The b is the beginning, the b is the mate of 0. So if I go back one, uh, b should be 6. So here we go. I think I just answered b. Create a model or function that's going to tell you how many gray tiles you need for any given design. So the design, or let's see, it's the number of tiles is equal to 4 times the design plus 6, or y equals 4x plus 6. So let's test it out. 3's got to give me 18. So is 18 really equal to 3 times 4 plus 6? Is 14 really equal to 2 times 4 plus 6? Okay, it works out, so I'm in good shape. So how many are we going to need for 48? I'm going to take 48, and I'm going to multiply it by 4, and then I'm going to add 6. So whatever that is, 48 times 4, and then plus 6 should give you 198. Okay, but then they ask how many white tiles are we going to need, so let me erase this. Okay, now the white tiles, let me do in a different color. The white ones, if we kind of organize our stuff into a table, that's really helpful. So design one, I got two white tiles. Design two, I got two, four, six. And design three, I've got 12. Okay, now the difference between the grays and the whites is the whites are growing at a quadratic rate. So six to 12, that went up six. So your grays are increasing at a linear rate, they're adding 4 every time, but the, the whites, even if you look at the whites, they're changing in two dimension. The height is getting taller, and the width is changing. The height is changing, the width is changing. So if it's growing in two dimensions, that's a hint that it's going to be linear, or it's going to be quadratic. Okay, now, how many white tiles are we going to need for design 48. So look at the third picture. The third picture I know is three tall and it's four wide. And the second picture is two tall and it's three wide. And the first picture is one tall and it's two wide. So I know the 48th picture is going to be 48 tall and it's going to be 49 wide if it follows this same pattern. So if you just kind of look and try and find a pattern, sometimes that's easier. So I believe this to be the pattern. On the 48th picture, there's going to be 48 white tiles tall, and there's going to be 49 across, so it's a rectangle, 48 times 49. So it's going to be 2,352.
but see if we try and model it with a function um, we know it's got to be quadratic okay let me show you with the uh, we're gonna model quadratics later on from tables and we're gonna use the the quadratic model but let's try and do it from a pattern on this one so if 48 is 48 tall and it's 49 wide and let's jump even to picture like 200 picture 200 is going to be 200 tall and it's going to be 201 wide and what about picture X picture X is going to be X tall but it's going to be X plus 1 wide and then you're just doing the base times the the height times the width so I'm just going to take my height and I'm going to multiply it to my width. So it's going to be x times x plus 1. And so you should end up with x squared plus x. So I know it's got to be quadratic, so it's got to be a square in there. Huh? So check it out. I've got to times this x to both. Because if my width is two terms I need to times both those terms by whatever the height is so let's test out this formula x squared plus x two if you put two in place of x it has to give you a six so two squared is four plus two that works plug in at three three squared is nine plus three that gives you twelve that works so, so far, so good. Okay, then the bottom question, D, which one grows at a linear rate? Okay, we've already answered that. So, the grays are growing at a linear rate, the whites are growing at a quadratic rate. Now, let's look at uh, kind of a story in context. So, this is from your very first test. Jim is training for the World Championship Hot Dog Eating Contest. He decides to eat four hot dogs on his first day, eight on his second, 12 on his third, 16 on his fourth, and so on. So, again, I'm going to kind of make maybe a little table. So, this is the day, this is the number of hot dogs. On day one, he eats four. On day two, he eats eight. On day three, he eats 12. On day four, he eats 16. Okay, and then at this rate, how many hot dogs is he going to eat on day 237? So we're going to skip. We're going to jump way down the road. Okay, let's analyze this pattern. This pattern, luckily, is increasing at a constant rate looks like he's increasing his hot dog eating by four hot dogs a day so if I want to jump clear to 237 the, I'm gonna use a function so I'm gonna try and figure out how two is becoming an eight and they are using this so it's linear, and I know the model for all linear functions is y equals mx plus b. And m is your rate of change. So m is changing four hot dogs a day. So to find the y, so remember we did this, the y is 12. To find 12, you're going to take that rate of change, which is 4, and you're going to multiply it by whatever the x is, and the x in this case is 3 and then you might have to add you have to give or take a little bit add b but in this case 12 is equal to 12 plus 0 so we think that uh, b is 0 so let's test it so the rule is you're just times in the x by 4 and you're not adding or subtracting any b so let's test it. 4 times 4 is 16. 3 times 4 is 12. Okay, it works for all of them. So 237 then. To figure out how many hot dogs he's going to have to eat, we'll just multiply that by 4. 
And then we get on day 237, he's going to have to eat almost 950 hot dogs. Okay, the model for the hot dogs he's going to have to eat on any given day is the hot dogs is going to equal 4 times whatever day he's on. Or y equals 4x. Okay, but now on day 237, notice that his skin's changed colors. He begins to worry about his health and wonders how many hot dogs he has consumed total since the very first day of training. For fun, he begins his calculations and comes up with, okay, this one. The table's going to be a little bit different. So on day one, he ate four hot dogs total, but on day two, he ate 12 hot dogs total because he ate eight hot dogs but then four on the first day so I'm adding on day three he ate twelve plus the twelve he ate previously so his total is at twenty four but now on day four twenty four plus the sixteen new ones he eats is gonna be forty okay so going to continue so on just like this. Now this is a quadratic model because from 4 to 12 that went up by 8 from 12 to 24 that went up by 12 from 24 to 40 that went up by 16 and now if we break those down, 8 to 12, that went up by 4. 12 to 16, that went up by 4. And this is how I know it's quadratic, because your second rate of change is constant. So the model for all quadratics, the standard form, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay, now if we try and find a, b, and c, so that's my goal. I need to find A, I need to find B, I need to find C. A is going to be 4. It's going to be this number right here, cut in half. So A is going to be 2. A is always the constant rate of change divided by 2. That one's easy to find, and C is easy to find. C is just like a B right here. It's the mate of 0. So, if I sneak a zero in here, its mate is going to be zero. Because I know that's got to be a plus four. So, C is going to be zero. So, on day zero, he eats zero hot dogs. So, now if I know A and I know C, I've, I've only got to find B. Okay, now to find B, you're gonna pick a ordered pair. I'm gonna pick. I'm gonna pick maybe two and twelve. Okay, in place of Y, I'm gonna substitute twelve. In place of A, I'm gonna substitute two. In place of X, I'm gonna substitute two. In place of B, that's what I'm trying to find, so there's nothing to plug in for B. But in place of X, I'm going to put that 2. And in place of C, I'm going to put 0. So I'm going to plug in my A, my C, my X, my Y. And if I plug in all those values, it should leave me with only B. So I can solve for B. So 12 is going to equal 2 squared is 4. 4 times 2 is 8 plus 2B. So now I'm going to minus 8, minus 8, 4 equals 2B, divide by 2, divide by 2, so B equals 2. So I think B is 2 as well. So my model is going to be this. My model, the total number of hot dogs is going to equal 2 times the day squared plus 2 times the day or y equals 2x squared plus 2x
So let's test it. Three. If I plug in three, it should give me a 24. So if I plug in day three, three times three is nine. Nine times two is 18. 18 plus six is 24. So it works for three. Let's test it for four. Four squared is 16. 16 times two is 32. 32 plus 8 is 40, so it's working. So this is a good is a good model. Okay, now we're looking at graphs. You're looking at pictures, and <coughs> you asked to determine if that is a function. So it's pretty easy to tell if you're looking at a picture you've got to use the vertical line test or on a table if I say three so let's go over this is your X and this is your Y at three right here if I plug in three it looks like it gives me for an answer the Y is somewhere between two and three maybe the Y is like uh, two point two and a third so for it to be a function that can be the only answer I get for three so I cannot plug in three later and tell me your answer is seventeen every time you plug in three it has to always be the same thing so your vertical line test on your graph if you draw a vertical line anywhere through the graph it should intersect it set it only once intercept it once so it's gonna cross no matter where you put this vertical line it's only gonna cross once so this is a function this is not a function if you've got a circle your vertical line test touches once right there touches once right there so if it touches twice that is not a function so this one is the domain the domain is all of your x values and the range is all of your y so let's look on this x number line this arrow means it goes forever so it's going to go all the way from a negative infinity on the x, but it's going to stop at 6. And it, it is empty on 6, so it does not include 6. It includes everything right up to 6. So we're going to hug 6 with the parenthesis, and we're going to hug negative infinity with the parentheses. So this is my domain. Anything from a negative infinity all the way up to 6. If the 6 would have been shaded in, if it would have been filled in, then it would have been negative infinity, always in parentheses, to 6. But if you're going to include 6, then it needs to be in a bracket. So let's look at the y-axis. Let's look at the range. So the up and down on the Y, it looks like this is the lowest point right here, and this is the highest point. So Y goes anywhere from 1 to 3. It includes 1, so bracket. It includes 3, so bracket. Anything between 1 and 3, including 1 and 3. Okay, now here's what I was talking about. We're going to give you a table, come up with functions. So let's look at this first table. And sometimes, I mean, you got to be ready to be tricked because your X's. This one looks like it's changing by 3 all the way. 7 to 10. Okay, it's always changing by 3. Now here, if I go from 12 to a negative 3, that went down. To go down 15 times. The negative 3 to negative 18, that went down 15. This is going to go down 15, down. Okay, so it appears to be linear. Because it's changing at the same rate every single time. So we got a linear function. Okay, now our model for the linear function is y equals mx plus b. But the m this time is going to be a little tricky to find. Because the m is not 
negative 15. It's not changing negative 15 every single time. It's changing negative 15 every third time. So your M is always going to be the change in Y over change in X, or else it's the rise over the run. So the rise is telling you to go down 15 over 3, down 15 over 3. So from dot to dot, go down 15 over 3, down 15 over 3, down 15 over 3. So your M is going to be a negative 15 over 3, or it's going to be a negative 5 over 1. And this is what we'll use. We'll use M for a negative 5. Every time it's changing negative 5. So every third time it's changing negative 15. So now, I've got my M. So let's try this. If I choose, if I choose a pair, if I choose this negative 18 and 4, y equals negative 18, x equals 4, yeah, let me see how it pass. m equals negative 5. So if we plug these in, a negative 18 is going to equal m, that's negative 5, times whatever your x is, that's 4. 4 plus some b. And we can use this to figure out what that b is. Negative 18 has got to be a negative 20 plus b. So b has got to be 2. 2 is going to be our b. So now here's my rule. I think I'm going to times by a negative 5. And then add 2. Let's see if this is our rule right here. So let's test it for 10. 10 is going to give you negative 48. So if you take 10 and times by negative 5, that's negative 50. And then add 2, negative 48, it works. 13 times negative 5 is negative 65. Add 2 is negative 63. That is it. So you either got to do this or you got to find the mate of 0. Squeeze a 0 in here. And that might be easier. And if you play with the pattern, the mate of 0 has to be 2. Okay, your model for the next one. Let's look at this next one. The next x's are growing by 1's every time, so you're in business. Now, 17 to 3. That went down 14 times. 3 to negative 3. That's still going down six times. Negative three to negative one. That turned around. And that went up twice. Negative one to nine. That went up uh, ten times. Nine to twenty-seven. How much did that go up? Twenty-seven take away nine. Eighteen. And then 53 minus 27, 26. So it's not linear because it shrinks, and then it turns around and starts to grow. So negative 14 to negative 6. Did that change 8 times? That went up 8. Negative 6 to 2, that went up 8. 2 to 10, that went up 8. 10 to 18 went up 8. Okay, so it's quadratic. It's quadratic because your second rate of change is constant. The model for quadratics is y equals a x squared plus bx plus c. So we gotta find a, we gotta find b, we gotta find c. A is gonna be eight cut in half, so a is gonna be four. C is in the table. So C is a negative 3. So now it's going to be easy. Now if you pick an ordered pair, I'm going to pick this one. I'm going to pick 
x equals 2 and y equals 9. And I'm going to plug all these values into the model. So in place of y, I'm going to put 9. In place of a, I'm going to put 4. In place of x, we're going to put 2. B, just leave it B, but in place of x, put 2. And in place of C, put negative 3. Can I just do the arithmetic? So 9 is going to be 2 squared is 4. 4 times 4 is 16. Plus 2B minus 3. So 9 is equal to 13 plus 2B. So first I'm going to minus the 13. So I'm out of space, but we got a negative 4 equals 2B. Now divide by 2, divide by 2, so we're hoping that b is going to be equal to a negative 2. If it is, our model is going to be y equals 4 x squared minus 2 x minus 3. This is it. So now you can test it. So if you test with 1, if you plug 1 in, we got to get a negative 1 out. So 1 squared, 4 minus 2 is 2, 2 minus 3, okay that's it, it works. Okay now we worked into graphing quadratics. So graph this by completing the square and then changing it from standard form to vertex form. Okay, let's look. This might be kind of a bad example. So look at this guy right here. Because always you want to factor it. So you want to try and factor it. Does there exist something that's going to times and give you 12, add and give you negative 8? So you got to times and get the C, but it adds and gives you B. And I think we can do a negative 6 and a negative 2. Those times give you 12, but they add and give you negative 8. So you can change this. Your first move, you can change this to x minus 6 times x minus 2. Because you don't want to use completing, completing the square, you only want to use if you cannot factor it. First, you always want to try and factor it. So check this out. We'll do it both ways. This one you can factor, so I want to factor it. It's going to make it a lot easier. So now, once it's factored, these are going to be my zeros. So if, I'm, if I want to make y be a zero, what does x have to be in order to give me zero for an answer? And x has to be a 6 or a 2. So I know that if x is 6 or 2, y is going to be 0. So if I put a dot on 6 and 0, and I put a dot on uh, 2 and 0, these are my two zeros. Okay, now I know the vertex has to be halfway between these guys. So my vertex has to be somewhere on this line right here. It's got to be somewhere on 4. So, if I know my vertex is going to happen at 4, I'm going to take, I don't know what the y is though, so I'm going to take this 4 and plug it in for x. So 4 take away 6 is a negative 2, and 4 take away 2 is 2, and then I times those, so negative 2 times 2 is going to be negative 4. So over 4 and down 4. So there is your quadratic right there. The domain and range. The domain is going to be the x number line. So if this parabola keeps on going forever, on the x number line, how far left is it going to go and how far right is it going to go? So these arrows. So as this parabola increases it's moving to the left it's moving to the right your domain is going to cover everything 
negative infinity all the way to positive infinity. The range, though, the range is the y number line. So it's going to go up forever. It's going to go up to infinity. But what's the lowest? The lowest is going to go is negative 4. It's never going to go lower than negative 4, but it's going to include negative 4, so we've got to put negative 4 in a bracket. Okay, now. So this was a good example for factoring, but it's kind of a bad example for completing the square. Let's check out completing the square. Completing the square, you use if they give you a bad C. So if we've got x squared minus 8x plus what? I'm just going to scoot this C over. So if you could pick any C you want, they gave us a 12, which was actually okay. It was good. But if you could pick any C you want, what C would you pick? And we would pick 16. We want a 16. I think we want a 16. If we want this, we want to add and give you a negative 8. And what number add itself is going to give you negative 8? It's going to be a negative 4 and a negative 4. You want to cut that right in half. But a negative 4 times a negative 4 is going to be 16. So we want this to be a 16. And how I got 16 is you just cut this in half. What number add itself gives you 8, negative 8, and then times itself should give you 16. Because here's what I want to create. I want to create x minus 4 times x minus 4. We want to create a perfect square. But if you add 16, you can't just go around adding 16s to problems. The moment you add 16, you got to take it away. So I got to take away a 16. Because add 16, take away 16, that's 0. But now you've created this perfect square. You got x minus 4 times x minus 4, and then this minus 16 and 12. Is a my from the same side. So if you put 16 in here, you can only drop it in there if you turn around and take it away. But this is all on one side. This is all on the same side. Because I can add 0 to any side and not change it. Or if you add 16 to this side, then you have to add 16 to this side. What you do to one side, you got to do to the other. But if you stay on the same side, if you add 16 on this side and then take away 16 on the same side, that's like adding 0 to it. So you didn't really do anything to it. So now you got this. You got on this x minus 4 times x minus 4. We're going to write it as x minus 4 squared minus 4. Okay, now this is in vertex form. If you ever have a perfect square, that's vertex form. Vertex form is probably the easiest to graph. So the vertex form is y equals x minus h squared plus k. Your vertex is right here. Your vertex is going to be 4 and negative 4. So the number in the parentheses, this is telling you to move right or left. And if it's a minus 4, it's telling you to move to the right 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. This is telling you to move up or down. It's down 4. So your graph is going to be the exact same. And once you've got the vertex, now you just plug in something close to the vertex. So I want to plug in a 3. So if I plug in a 3 into my model, 3 take away 4 is a negative 1, and a negative 1 squared is 1, and 1 minus 4 is a negative 3. So now I go over 3 and down 3. So my parabola should go through those three dots. So it's going to give you the exact same parabola, exact same problem. But you only use completing the square 
if they give you a bogus C. If they give you a C that won't let you factor. Okay, let's look at uh, 2. Okay, this one will be fast because we just did it. This one they want you to factor. So can you rewrite this as a multiplication problem? Does there exist something that multiplies gives you negative 18 but adds and gives you negative 3? And it should be a negative 6 and a plus 3. So we can change this x minus 6 times x plus 3 and now once it's in factor form it's easy to find the zeros so let's figure out what's going to make this equal to 0 0 equals x minus 6 times x plus 3 and if you want your y's to be zeros your x's have got to be 6 and a negative 3 so now you've got your two zeros put a dot on 6 0 Put a dot on negative three zero, and now your vertex has to split those. It's got to go right between those. So if you take the average of them, if you take the six and the negative three, and if you add them, that gives you three. If you cut that in half, it's going to be one point five. So your vertex has got to go through. One point five should be the dead center. So now let's take 1.5 and let's substitute it in place of x into the model. Plug it in for x and do the math and it will give you what the y should be. So 1.5 minus 6 1.5 plus 3 and then times those together should get a negative 20.25 negative 20.25 is not even on the graph it's clear down here so your parabola has got to look something like that okay the domain and range the domain is the x number line and this covers everything so the domain you can say is all real numbers it's going to cover everything on the x axis the range on the y it goes up forever so on the y it goes up all the way to infinity but the bottoms out it bottoms out at negative 20.25 so negative 20.25 is the smallest it gets it includes it so it's a bracket so the range is anything from negative 20.25 all the way up to infinity Okay, let's look at this function. Leave it in standard form and then plot the graph, the y intercept. Okay, standard form is just y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. The y intercept is c. So 3 is my very first dot. On the y axis, I got a dot at 3. And then a negative b divided by 2a is part of your quadratic formula so x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a so this negative b over 2a it comes from your quadratic formula but the negative b over 2a without all this plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac that will give you your line of symmetry so negative b over 2a, I know in this function a is how many squares you've got, so a is a negative 2. b is how many x's you've got, that's a negative 4. And c is how many numbers you've got by themselves, that's 3. So a negative b is going to be a negative, negative 4 divided by 2 times a, 2 times a negative 2. So on top you got a positive 4, on bottom you got a negative 4, positive 4 divided by negative 4 is negative 1. So negative 1 is my line of symmetry. So that means this dot right here, this dot at 3, gets reflected across the line of symmetry right there. 
and now if I know my line of symmetry I'm gonna do the same thing if I know my x is gonna be negative 1 I can find the y piece of cake I'm gonna take negative 1 and I'm gonna substitute it into my model so negative 1 squared is negative 1 times negative 1 that's positive 1 positive 1 times negative 2 is negative 2 negative 1 plugged into this x a negative 4 times negative 1 is a positive 4 and then plus 3 so it should give the y should be a 5 so I'll go left 1 and come up 5 and there should be your vertex so this problem opens down and we know it opens down because your a is negative and that means it's going to be upside down Okay. Can you write a function by looking at the pictures? If you look at these pictures, this one is linear, so the model is y equals mx plus b. The b is easy to find. The b is where it crosses the y-axis. So the b is going to be negative 1. And the m if you get some dots on here the M is probably easiest to find by just rise over run so if you connect these dots how far are we going over how far are we going up from dot to dot the rise looks like it's two the run looks like it's one up two over one up two over one up two over one so we're gonna say the M is up two over one and that's a positive slope because from left to right it's going up so my answer is going to be y equals 2x minus 1 and this parabola you ask yourself do they give you the zeros or did they give you the vertex and on this one they gave you the vertex the vertex is at a negative 1 and 3 so we're going to use the vertex model. The vertex model is y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. So guide me to this vertex. How do we get to the vertex? I went left 1 and I went up 3. So y equals a times x. This number right here is telling you to go left or right. And since I went left 1, it's got to be plus 1 plus goes to the left, minus goes to the right, and I went up 3, so this has got to be plus 3. So I got this one taken care of, I got this one taken care of. Your A is your dilation, that's how quick it grows or shrinks. So in the picture it makes it fat or skinny. And because it's upside down, I know A has to be some kind of negative number. So if I need to find A, just pick a point. So pick this point right here any point will work so I've got a point at 1 and 1 and I'm gonna take 1 and plug it in for X take 1 and plug it in for Y so this is gonna be 1 oh 0 and 1 nice okay this is not 1 and 1 this is uh, 0 and 1 so Y replace it with the 1 A leave it as a A X replace that with 0 and then just do the arithmetic. So parentheses for 0 plus 1, 1, 1 squared is 1. So 1 equals a times 1. That's just 1a plus 3. So minus 3, minus 3. a has got to equal a negative 2. And we knew it had to be negative, so that feels pretty good. So my final answer is y equals a negative 2 times x plus 1 squared plus 3 this and if you punch this in on your calculator and graph it you could compare the graphs so use your street smarts plug these in on your calculator and look at the graphs